The Big Bang Theory In the deep vast of space 14.5 billion years ago, the entire universe was one complete dot about the size of an atom. It was extremely small and extremely dense. That it exploded into bigger parts such as the galaxies and the stars, scientists call this theory the Big Bang Theory. Within 10 minutes after the point of matter exploded, the intensity heat came together to form nebulas and over thousands and maybe millions of years the nebulas became a desert creation known as protostars. Eventually, they will become stars. The only element the star uses as its fuel is hydrogen. However, a scientist named Fred Hoyle knew that everything was made from stars, but he did not know how those heavier elements such as titanium and chromium were made until he found out about red giants. These massive stars are hundreds, maybe thousands, or millions times larger than the average star. These stars were able to produce massive amounts of matter that we see here in laboratories and powerful telescopes today. The funny thing about the Big Bang it was that it broke one of the biggest laws of physics. 14.5 billion years ago, nothing, absolutely nothing could go faster than the speed of light. Until the Big Bang banged. Within a millionth of a millionth of a millionth of a millionth of a second, the universe expanded from the size of an atom to a baseball. You may think this is not so much. What if you compare a golf ball growing in the same amount of time? By the millionth of a millionth of a millionth of a millionth of the second was over, the golf ball should be the size of Earth. Since everything was moving extremely fast during the Big Bang, scientists used a unit of time called Planck time. If you were to compare the amount of Planck time per second and all of the seconds since the Big Bang, which was 14.5 billion years ago, there are more Planck's in a second than all of the seconds since the Big Bang. In the 1940s, scientists found out that one fourth of our sun is composed of helium. They realized that the sun had to be burning at billions, but it was only burning at 15 million degrees. This became a worldwide question in science conferences. Two men were at the center to solve this mystery. One was Fred Hoyle, and the other was a Ukrainian scientist named George Gamow. George Gamow knew that in order for all the helium to form, temperatures must be at billions of degrees hotter than our sun. To explain this, he used a theory that explained how the whole universe was made. He called it the Big Bang Theory. His theory meant that the entire universe started as one piece of matter that had heated over trillions of degrees. He thought this theory could solve the question of excess helium, the sun. Gamma knew if the entire universe was squeezed into one tiny dot, it would be extremely hot. After it exploded, all of the heat literally cooked our stars within the minutes. The hydrogen will bond together to form helium. After that, everything should have cooled down, but that was enough time to create our stars. Plus, without the theory, Gamma knew that Hoyle couldn't explain how the universe was made. Even though that problem was solved, Fred Hoyle still didn't know how the stars create elements such as silver and uranium. To make the elements that were heavier than iron was impossible because iron absorbs the energy of a star. The star is unable to hold its own energy, so gravity wins over nuclear fusion. When gravity wins, the star explodes. However, near the end of the Second World War, Fred Hoyle found the answer in the Southern California Observatory. While he was there, he met the great astronomer Walter Barter. Walter told him about supernovae, where extremely massive stars explode in unimaginable temperatures at billions or trillions. After that, Hoyle realized with these great temperatures, atoms could fuse together to make the heaviest of elements. When the massive stars explode, they run out of hydrogen to burn up. Their atoms fuse together at extreme temperatures to form heavy elements such as zinc, gallium, and lanthanum. There was a radio telescope that found evidence supported theory in south of New York, close to the states of New Jersey, the Bell Lab or Antenna. However, it was originally used for satellite communication. In the mid-1960s, two researchers, Arnold Penzias and Robert Wilson, got a hold of this radio telescope for Bell Laboratories. 
They decided to do research to see whether or not the theory was true. Before they started their experiment, they had to get rid of the material that caused the background noise. They call it dielectric material. They spent a year cleaning the telescope, but there was still one sound they could not get rid of, no matter where the telescope faced. This was a sign of radiation. This was the afterglow of Gamel's Big Bang Theory. This radio telescope showed that people, no matter which position, you could hear a faint radio signal. If the universe was spreading, that means the radio signal must have spread too. This means the Big Bang Theory must have been right. Based on this pattern, it seems the universe will run out of hydrogen, which is the basic element which forms stars. This will cause the universe to run out of stars. The largest ones will die first, then the average ones, and the last of the stars. The smallest ones. The universe will become cold, dim, and dark. No life such as we know will survive. Our future looks grim for now, but looking at the bright side, we are in an era where stars are being born, life is being born, and the universe is constantly expanding.